All right, so we are uh, we're finally here. Look at that. That is the Burgund Stave Church in the distance. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about this Stave Church before we go in because it has a very unique history. So it was built around 1180 and it's one of the earlier Stave Churches built here in Norway and it is definitely one of the most preserved churches that we can still find today. It was left almost intact internally, so inside it is almost as it was in original form. The outside changed a little bit, uh, but again, not that much. And after, because originally you have to remember, all these churches were Catholic. And then when the Reformation came around, um, some of the uh, designs were altered, like for example, windows were added. Um, so after, um, after this church got bought by a historic society in the 19th century, they actually sort of, uh, you know, cleansed it. Uh, they say off the uh, Reformation motif. So they they tried to restore it to its original uh, format. Now, a cool thing about these churches is that they're they're made without a single nail. So the whole structure is just wood. And that's what makes it so complicated because it took a engineering genius to create something like this, you, you know, just all interlocking with each other, just with wood. Now a stave church, what, what is a stave church? Why does it call the stave? Well, to be a stave church, um, all of the columns, all of the wood uh, logs are pointed upwards. So you, well, not all, but like the base, the framework is going upwards. So not unlike log cabin where you have one log uh, on top of the other, on top of the other, these are stacked vertically. And uh, this is why it has a ability to withstand time and not, not kneel one side to the other. It sort of inter interlocks in such a way that it keeps everything nice and tight. Now the process that that they went through to create these logs is also very unique because um, to get the wood to be of right consistency, what they did is actually they would find a, a spruce tree, they would cut the branches off, and then they would leave that tree in its root standing for a few years. And because the, the, the branches were cut, the oils would slowly seep out of the wood, making it harder and, and making it last much longer. And so after a few years, they would cut it down and then use it as a material to build this church. So it's a very unique way how they build it. Another tragic but very interesting fact about the process of building these state churches is that in 14th century, Norway went through their black plague phase and so the population shrink drastically a lot of people died and the craftsmen uh, that were responsible for building these church and churches um, a lot of them died and were unable to pass their craft to their children and grandchildren so till this day nobody quite knows how they built them there has been replicas um, uh, made in our present day by the way, a lot of replicas copy this church that we are about to see. However, to do it exactly like they did is, is impossible. Nobody knows the exact techniques and the tar that is used on the, on the roof, um, the, 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 the formula for that tar is lost as well. So actually, they have to retar this church every three years because um, the tar is not of a good quality like it was before where where it would last for maybe a hundred years so you can imagine the uh the um the secret the secrets of trade that these um um you know children and grandchildren of vikings had uh to build something like this uh that is unfortunately lost today which makes this one even more unique and historic and significant so let's go check it out i'd love to show you around here it is the Borgund Stave Church. Look at that beautiful Stave Church. Wow. You know, I don't know if the, the camera portrays it as I'm seeing it, but it's very dark. You know, of course, that the dark color comes from the, uh, from the tar, the tar that they cover the church every two to three years. You see in some places it's a little lighter because the tar has since 
uh, weathered away. But yes, there it is. The Burgan Church, one of the best preserved, the most authentic church in all of Scandinavia. As you can see, it is nothing, nothing like the churches we see today. It is a very unique shape, uh, design, and right here, sort of placed in the background of the sky, we see these dragging heads. That's what they are. So these uh, things that stick out to the different side, that's, that's dragon, dragon heads. And of course, that is based deeply on the Nordic mythology of uh, dragons as uh, mystical creatures that inhibited, the, inhibited these lands. And it portrays just how close these people were to the old beliefs when they were building something like this. You know, one of the theories is also when you look at this church, especially from far back, it looks like a spruce tree, you know, just sort of uh, pyramiding up as, as you go, as you look up. And um, some people have hypothesized that what this represents is, um, is the tree of life from the northern mythology, Yadrasil. Um, that tree was supposed to represent the universe as the old Norse people saw it. So at the top, you would have the gods and Valhalla, um, where people that were good in battle would go to after death. In the middle, you have Midgard, where, you know, we live, where the earth, our world, is located. And underneath, you would have Hela, which is, you know, our, our version of hell. This is where people that were cowardly or didn't want to fight or lived their life dishonorably would go after death. And so it would be represented as a gigantic ash tree, magical ash tree. And around it, you would have a serpent uh, sort of um, circumventing it um, and containing the oceans from spilling out. So this would be the, the universe of humans as the ancient Norsemen saw it. So, so when, they were, were, when they were building this, you know, some people said that perhaps that's what they had in mind, right? They combined a classical cathedral uh, design of the church, which, which reminisce, reminisces a shape of a cross, together with an older belief of tree of Yadrasil. Yadrasil. And, oh, wow, I just walked into some poison ivy. Cool. <laughs> Ouch. Anyway, um, so... So there we go. This is um, this this is the unifications of two beliefs. You have to remember, it's built in 1180. The Viking Age ended in 11th century. So this is only 80 years after you know what we know as Vikings um, ended. So people stopped pillaging and raiding. So 80 years. What is that? Well, that's that's about three, two or three generations. So the people that built it were might have been um, the, the grandchildren of the Vikings and some of the older folks that were still walking around when this was built were the children of the Vikings. In fact, some of the Vikings might have still been around if they were in their 80s. So you can imagine these, these guys that were building this would still remember the childhood tales where, and not even tales, it's just, just childhood memories of their fathers and their grandfathers, you know, leaving on these raids and looting for gold and and coming back and and having these grand grand celebrations at the at the grand halls right that, that's that was their life that that was um what they were been brought up in and then christianity got to this region a little bit later than the rest of norway so so this is when they started building churches up here norway was christianized in a year um after year 1000 so this is almost 180 years after that, but still, it's just so cool to conceptualize it in that way, to think that the people that built this very structures, structure, unaltered as it is, were kids or grandkids or grandkids of the Vikings that we all know from the TV shows and books 
and in other sources. So, so of course, there's a lot, a lot of inf influence um, that went into their ideology from that age when they were building this masterpiece. So let's let's come a little closer, take a closer look. Let's go inside, and I'll show you some really, really, really neat stuff. Let's go. Here we are. Look at this. Wow. Look at that. You know, the fascinating thing is it still it still smells of sap. You know, all this um all this tar that they used. Um because they use it very often to recover it. It gives the church a little bit of a, a burnt sap smell, uh, kind of amplifying your experience as you walk around it. You cannot, you can not only see it and, and, and by the way, touch it, but you can also smell it. So it's all your, all of your senses are engaged when you're looking at this beautiful piece of art and history. Wow, it sort of takes your breath away. Look at that. You know, another thing is as you're looking at these um, shingles that they used to cover up the, the roof, I mean, it is hard not to see resemblance of, of scales, right? And when we combine, when we combine this, these scale images with the heads of a dragon, you can sort of you can sort of imagine how it all ties together. So you have a dragon head and then scales going from, from it down. It's a dragon, right? So how cool is that? You're looking at a Catholic church um, that is sort of built in the shape of a dragon, maybe. Mm. All right, guys, let's go inside. This is no longer an active church. It's a museum church. <laughs> However, look at this beautiful portal. Look at these carvings. Wow. Wow, look at that. Watch your step. So the oldest element in the altar is probably the stone. That probably was here before the church was made. Mm -hmm. Pointing out this place as a sacred place. So that's why the church is here. Mm -hmm. Because it was a okay. meaningful place. So there are not uh, original paintings from the time uh, when the church was, was built. It's just uh, those. The, the elements are posterior. So there are rest of paintings here, probably uh, previous to the Reformation, Middle Ages, uh, but they were not preserved. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. So, so sorry. So the stone is uh, it's it's like a, could oh, it be from? Is it is it from like the old pagan times? Would well, you... it says that probably it was here before the church was made. But this is a second generation church because okay. there were a rest of a previous one, uh -huh. but they didn't know how to preserve it. So probably the stone was here before the churches were made. Wow. We don't know it. And we don't know what kind of rituals. Wow. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> okay. We don't know it. <laughs> and where are the runic inscriptions? The runic inscriptions, you can find it uh, in the main door here. Uh -huh. they, they, they are covered with glass. Oh, they're covered? Yes, they are protected with uh, pieces of glass. Oh, I see. And which, what does that one say? Yeah. Well, I don't really remember. Oh, oh it says on the plaque. Yeah. No, 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 this is for pictures. Oh, okay. So these are very old ones. Ah, I see, I see, I see. And then you have another one here. Oh, right here. Yeah. So, but nothing inside the church. Yeah, you can find also some room inscriptions inside of the church, uh -huh. some columns and some other places. Oh, really? I am not an expert. Okay, so. Ain't no problem. <laughs> Is there anything other kind of cool or mysterious inside? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you a very nice table that are the masks. Oh. You have this one here. Uh huh. And you have another one there. Uh huh. But at the end of every column, if you take a, a column from the bottom and you go up. Uh huh. 
till the end, which is almost an entire tree, uh -huh. you have another mask. There. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what does that signify? Well, we don't know the meaning of these masks. You can, can you see the other ones? Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Each one has a mask. Yeah. So wow. We have 12. It's what we know for sure. Oh. Could it be uh, the apostles, maybe, or something like that? Yeah, that's a theory that maybe uh, the masks are for sure pagan uh, symbols. Okay. That we cannot be sure about mm. the uh, meaning. Okay. But as they are 12, and these churches were made when the Christianism was arriving to Norway, uh, they were giving new, a new uh, meaning to these uh, pagan symbols. So 12 were the apostles. Mm -hmm. So we have an apostle in a face of a cat, which is oh, a funny thing. That's a very... Syn yeah, because the syncretism, the, symbolis the symbolic syncretism, mm -hmm. and this encounter of symbols, brought, brings this funny kind of funny things, you know, mm. that happens when there is this encounter of religious religions. Very interesting. And this is a pulpit? Yeah, huh. this is the pulpit. It belongs to the Reformation. I see. And, and and that painting you said is from 16... The painting, I think, is from 17th S century. Okay. It's and what a, about the, um, the, the, the the objects right there? What, 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 uh, what? Well, they are... I don't really know that uh -huh. much. I think they are... There's a Bible? Uh -huh. A Bible. Uh -huh. Probably the, uh, uh, close for the priest. Mm. And is it possible to go upstairs, or like, was it ever possible? No, never had. Ne it was never a second floor here. Okay. It just was a balcony in this part of the church. Oh, uh -huh. In order to give a little bit more of space, uh, because uh, with the Reformation, people had to be seat. So there were benches in the oh. in the church, uh -huh. and there were less room for people. So in order to have a little bit more of room, they they made. Uh, a balcony, a small balcony, but there is not a gallery. Uh -huh. Never, yeah, these holes, these holes. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, 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 you can see the holes right here. The to give a uh -huh. space. Wow. Yeah. That is so neat. Here's the view that, that a priest would have from the, from the, from the altar. He would have people standing here then there would be a balcony right here as you can see it's been taken down but there's a there's still marks here where where the supporting bars for the balcony would be and um yeah be a little pretty crammed place but what a cool cool place you know it smells of wood it smells very authentic you get a very um, very interesting feeling in here that's for sure Okay, well, we just exited through one of the portals, side portals here. When you do that, let's look around and see the carvings, because the carvings are fantastic. And sometimes the different portals would be used for different celebrations, so on different holidays, perhaps you would use different portals to enter and exit. But right by the portals here, we can actually see some of the ancient runes. So let me just squeeze in, get a better view. Look at this. No, I can't. All right, well, I hope you can sort of get a glimpse of it. Uh, let's see, there we go. It's not much, but these are authentic runes. This, of course, would be the younger Futhark. So this would be after 700 years AD, which is when the runes changed and become became a little bit more simplified. Now, I'm not sure what this one says, but I'll tell you what some of these runic inscriptions tell once we, once we leave. And there's another one right next to here. Let me see if I can... There you go. There you go. Wow, okay. That was really cool. Oh my God. Look at that. Why don't we go around inside? Look at this. Maybe this is where people would huddle. Let's say if it's 
raining heavily or snowing, you know, this is where maybe you would find some shelter from that. And look at that, the whole church is surrounded by, by a cemetery. So it's a very much a place of celebration and remembrance. You know, walking here is, it's, it's really surreal because it's, you know, if there was ever a time machine invented, this would be it. You know, it, you sort of get lost in this history, history mood. And you imagine yourself to be one of those people that came here to worship um, Christianity at the time. Oh, this is really neat. Look at this. So we're, we're at one of, we're at the, um, one of the sides of the church and here it's completely covered up. So look at that. We're sort of behind where the altar is, right? Just outside it. And here you can't, you can't, you can't see anything, you know, and that's maybe symbolical of how you, you can't really go up to the altar and you can't even maybe look at the altar from this side. You know, there's a lot of privacy associated with the altars. So of course, I think this is why this is covered up to the extent that we can see. It's a very, it's very unique name. Uh, kind of, this is a very unique place. It's sort of like you're in a little hut, you know, and now we're walking out this way. And again, you can sort of glimpse outside and here's a little window. You can actually look inside. I don't know if you can see, but this is this is the inside of the church. And here's the altar right there, and the rest. I'm not sure if this was what this was used for. Why is there? Probably just to give a little bit more light. That's cool. I'm... Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Here's yet. No, I think we saw this portal already. There we are. We've seen this one. Okay, guys. So we just did our um, internal tour of the church. Wow, was that fantastic! I've been dreaming to visit this place for so so long. Um, it just it just looks something out of fairy tales, and and, and it is, it's a truly a privilege to be here and to experience it for yourself. It's it's nothing. The pictures will never will never portray it um, in its original glory. You know, walking inside, you can you can feel, you can smell, you can see um, the history, the ancient history of this country. And, and just to know that this has been built by the hands of the people so close to the Vikings, which are such a fascinating um, chapter in history of this, of our earth, um, you know, it's, it's fascinating. So what I really wanted to mention is, of course, the altar stone that we saw inside. And I was fascinated to find out that that altar is not um, dated to when this church was built, but it is dated to a prior religious um, temple that might have been at this place. It was here before this state church was built in 1180. And of course, what we know from history is that usually um, churches um, that were built in the newly Christianized areas were built on a pagan sacred sites. Um, because one thing, it was convenient, people were already going there. Um, you know, it, was, it usually was in a good place already, like close to water, close to get, like easy to get to, or had some kind of importance. Uh, locally, but also Catholic Church didn't want to anger the new converts too much. So they wanted the conversion to be as easy as possible. So um, to do that, they said, well, why, why burn down? Like, why, why, why replace it? If people have been going there for generation, why don't we just take that place and make it our own? So we'll keep the location. Sometime we'll keep some of the structure, uh, but we will just sort of convert it into a Christian church. And they believe that this is exactly what happened here at the Burgund Stave Church. You have um, strong scientific evidence of a structure being at this site before this structure was built. Well, um, this part of Norway has been Christianized quite late. 
So more than likely that this place is the place where a pagan ta temple would stand. And if this is where the pagan ta temple of the ancient North people would stand, well then that altar rock is probably the altar rock that they would use for their rituals. Now we know that uh, ancient North uh, mythology is, is it's, it's beautiful, it's unique, it's colorful, but it's also quite violent. And of course, in some of the pagan rituals, there were sacrifices made. That was a, it's, it was a, a focal point of a lot of the rituals, a sacrifice, not only of um, goods, but also of living things. So like, um, like, like the tour lady said, it is, it is a not a far-fetched idea that that same altarpiece that the, that the Christians been using for now almost for over 800 years is the same rock that the ancient North pagans used to, to do their sacrifices on. Now, it is speculation, but you know, during these sacrifices, you could see anything from small animals to big animals and, um, and, and human sacrifices were a part of, of, the, uh, of the practice. Um, of course, will there, is there proof of this? No. Will there be a proof of that? Probably not. However, it is not a far-fetched idea. And if that's the case, we just saw an altar where um, possibly human sacrifices were made. I mean, you don't see that every day. That is, uh, that is uh, quite a unique, unique place. So here you go. This is why I think this is just one of a kind place you know not only do you get an amazing christian history you get an amazing uh nordic pagan history look and uh and you see how it all tied together at the time when one went f from one to another when when northmen went from being pagans to christians it is all laid out in the design of this magnificent church Look how beautiful this looks. Wow, magnificent. Now, I also want you to think about this. Just imagine, just imagine yourself being a, a local to this area in 11880. Um, 1180. You come here on a cold, on a cold winter Sunday. And as you can, you can hear perhaps, but there's a, there's a river up there so perhaps you're taking your boat and you're sailing here and the and the falling snow and it's frigid and it's cold and uh and people will be standing sort of where where we see a tour groups standing right there so there'll be a large crowd of about 100 to 200 to 300 people just standing there waiting for the doors of the church to open and they wouldn't they wouldn't open them very often because you know not to let in all the all the cold air so you would have all these people clustered here right behind me and then you know the the doors would flung open and you would see this gleaming light of candles and the priest standing at the altar and people would shuffle in and and huddle up together and feel warm and feel safe at this unique place of worship and just <clears throat> just really you know really makes it so real and makes it so real to be here another thing i wanted to mention is um the uh, the runic scriptures that we saw um unfortunately i can't i can't read runic but um i can't read runes but i i have done my research and i know what some of these messages said so one of them said um i thor wrote these inscriptions on the eve of saint olive's mass that's pretty cool because and and that's probably the one we saw outside so you can imagine somebody just sort of standing there maybe waiting for the for the doors to open or or uh, sneaking away and writing it it's not inside it's outside so people maybe wouldn't see him doing that but you can see how that could be maybe a little protest somebody who clearly believes in the old religion thor you know god of war um and uh, he says well i thor wrote this so maybe maybe he is claiming you know claiming this church back for the old gods or maybe it's somebody's name of thor you know maybe it's that simple um 
However, it's hard to tell. You know, I always like to believe in the more romantic version of the tale, so I, I maybe want to believe that that's him saying that my god Thor claimed this church where I was here when you had your Christian mass. Another writing is a complaint from a man basically, um, you know, complaining about his life and saying how these um, uh, mythical northern deities called uh, Norns have, have ruined his life. And, and Norse were, Norns were um, gods that were supposed to protect um, protect the people. And so I guess he's blaming these deities on, on ruining his day or business or whatever is going wrong with his life. And again, you know, a strange thing to see from a, from a Catholic um, believer, you know, it's like, which, well, which way, which way do you go? But that's normal because you have to remember these people just converted. So at home, their grandparents might still be talking about this. Maybe it was just a little, little teenager, right? Who, who heard one thing at home and heard another thing at here and maybe believed here and there. Um, who knows, but right. So, but it puts everything in perspective, how, um, how people weren't truly fully Christian when they built this. Um, they were very much still, um, they're still very much still influenced by their old Northern pagan beliefs. Just one last view as we continue our journey. I highly, highly, highly suggest make your best effort to one day visit this beautiful Stafe Church in Burgund. And here we have the bell tower. So the bells were actually not in the church but in a separate tower right here and you can still see the bell right there. Not sure, oh it's starting to rain. I'm not sure if you can still hear them if they still play but this is where the bells were and are. And then just up the road here, you see the new Stave Church. Now this one is actually functional. This is the Burgund Church. And then just down there is the old one. this this is kind of neat it still has a furnace like this to keep this place hot this is definitely not something I've seen in any churches before that's really cool nice and simple but so beautiful okay. so here you go the new church and the old church. Beautiful continuation of, of history of Christianity in Norway. All ties in together so very beautifully. You know, people can go here and people can go there. This one is not an active church, but I mean, what really makes an active church anyway, you know? I think if people worshipped here for hundreds of years, I think places like this will forever stay religiously important. So I'd say in a way they're both active, but of course the official masses are happening right there. Sorry, services. All right, well, I think this is a, an appropriate time for us to depart. It's beginning to rain. We still have a long hike up the mountain, down the mountain, and then uh, another four, four and a half hour drive to Bergen. And along the way, we're still gonna make really cool stops and I'll show you guys a little bit more of Norway's history. But uh, as we walk away, just look at this beautiful, beautiful church.
Well, and hey guys, look at this. Right by the church, we can see a little museum. So this is some of the historical stuff that has been preserved over the years. I think this might be the one of the the original, actually, tops of the church. Perhaps one of the original crosses. I think some of the crosses on the church have been replaced, so this might be that. What is this? Let's see. Oh, this is some stone masonry. You know, it's, a, it's another fascinating look. You can sort of see how the process of building such a stave church looked. You know, here's the design. This, this, is, this is quite interesting. Look, look how intricate the work, woodwork is, huh? You see how all the wooden pieces support each other. So if it kneels one way or the other, the connections will sort of straighten out the whole structure. And remember, there's not a single nail used in a construction of this of this stave church or any other original stave churches that are still in place in Norway and Scandinavia. Here's the type of tools that they would use. As you can see, really, really primitive tools. You know, this is uh, this is not this is not uh, something sophisticated. You see, this is a type of tar that is used to cover the church. It's black. It's made out of burning the sap from the trees and then covering it up, covering the wood up with it to make it last. Here's some other artifacts. We can, that are probably from the same church, I believe. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that beautiful painting. There you go. Can you just imagine how how the church services looked back in the day. And you see how see how different it looks? So that's what I meant. This is when, when it became, uh, this is after Reformation. You can see big windows everywhere, right? Oh, and there looks like what appears to be a clock. So all of that has been obviously changed back to its original form in the 18th, sorry, 19th century, which is a little bit, you know, sad always. You know, whatever history is, it's, it's always uh, interesting to see it, but in the same time, it is really neat that they reverted it back to its original form so we can see you know, the older version of it. Here's another unique look at the inside of the church. So you can see the, uh, the, the wooden design and how, how it all came together. Look how cool that is, wow. And here's some of our friends, or not. Hey, sheep. Come here. Sheepy. Sheep, 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 sheep. Come on. Meow. Meow. No. Okay, they don't like us much.